coming out stories are deeply personal and sometimes it's a singular moment of revelation but other times it's a gradual process. Career coach Sarah Vermont joins us now to share her story. And Sarah, your coming out journey started a little bit later in life. So take us through the realization and where you were at that point. Yeah, sometimes I say I'm a bit of a, a late bloomer in this community. Uh, like a lot of people, I sort of assumed that if you were gay, you probably grew up knowing on some level that you were gay. I think that's a really common assumption. And that was not my experience. So uh, I was rather surprised when I discovered, uh, identified, stepped into my queerness just three years ago when I was 37. Uh, I'm 40 now, so that was something that happened uh, much later than I thought it ha happened for people. Um, and so, yeah, I'm sort of uh, someone who realized that uh, this can happen in all sorts of different ways for different people. For me, uh, at 37, thinking, uh, you know, I, I really like solidly knew who I was. I certainly wasn't expecting it. And so to be totally honest with you, I had what I will call a legit identity crisis at that time. Um, mostly because I didn't really know like what to do with it. Uh, I didn't necessarily feel ready to start dating women right away. Um, however, I, I trusted the, the knowing that I felt that, that it was true for me. And so even though I didn't really know uh, what to do with it, so to speak, right away. I trusted it and I told my partner right away, uh, a man I'd been with for four years. I told my friends and family right away and uh, I came out more publicly just a little over a year ago. Um, so it's been quite an, quite an interesting journey for me and certainly later than I expected this happens for a lot of people. So let's go to the um sort of the coming out experience, were there any challenges uh, in that journey? Oh yes, uh, I would say the biggest challenge for me, honestly, was kind of just um, defining who I am, even to myself, um, because I don't necessarily feel like I fit into a neat and tidy box. Um, you know, I have questions like, am I bi? Am I lesbian? Uh, I'm in a relationship with a woman right now. Does that necessarily mean I'll never date a man again? Honestly, I don't know. And for myself to have this sort of like evolving identity has been, it's just been tricky for me. Um, I really like the word queer because it's all encompassing. And it feels good to me because um, I guess it feels good for me specifically because at least in my own experience, sexuality is a lot more fluid than I had previously believed. Um, and so for me, I still feel like things are evolving and I'm, I'm just feeling it out, but it has been hard. The fluidity is something that I feel people are wrapping their heads around more now because I feel like we're very used to concrete categories and that's just not always the situation. So I, I like I understand uh, why you would sort of want things to be nailed down, but then, you know, that's just not the reality, right, for everyone. Have you encountered any homophobia since you have come out? In small ways, I'm very lucky. Um, I've been embraced with a lot of love, uh, including uh, immediately from my former partner uh, when I came out to him. Uh, but that's mostly because I only have good people in my life. I'm very uh, intentional <laughs> about who I include in my circle. But of course, I encounter homophobia. I hear the jokes. I hear the slurs. Um, honestly, the, the homophobia I encounter now, I would say it's more... Um, subtle and it has less to do with hatred and I think more to do with discomfort. So for example, someone using the word friend when they're talking about my girlfriend instead of using the word girlfriend or partner, for example. And I think that's just their discomfort showing through. Um, but I mean, the fact that people still are uncomfortable with queerness means that there's, there's still some work to do. I think truthfully, transphobia is a much bigger issue than homophobia these days. Um, I've had some trans partners in the past and I know their struggle has been much greater than mine. 
Sarah, any advice, uh, someone listening to this and thinking, oh my goodness, I can identify to this, this resonates with me. Any advice you would give somebody going through a similar journey? I would say give yourself a little bit of grace, um, particularly if something like this takes you a bit by surprise, like it did for me or if it feels new for you. Um, it's probably going to take you some time to navigate it and to figure out how you feel. The other piece of advice I would say is to find a way to be yourself, um, and that's going to be a little bit different for everyone, um, and it's probably going to take some time. Words of wisdom. Sarah, thank you so much for sharing your story with us.